Hey everybody, welcome to the project overview video for the project Build a Data Analysis Library from Scratch in Python. So in the next series of videos, you're going to learn how to build a data analysis library completely from scratch using the Python programming language. The end result is going to be a fully functioning library that's going to be very similar to Pandas and we will affectionately call it Pandas Cub. The target student is someone who already understands the fundamentals of Python. So this project is not for beginners and it is assumed throughout that you have already acquired these basics. It is for students who desire to immerse themselves in a larger and more comprehensive project. It is for those who desire to learn more advanced Python topics particularly uh, usage of the Python data model, which will be touched on in several of the steps. And it's for those who wish to learn more about basic software development. So you're going to learn about setting up your own environment and conducting unit tests. This is a very long project. You're not going to be able to complete it in just an hour or two. It's going to have 40 steps in it. There's going to be one video per step. There are a hundred unit tests that have already been written that need to be passed in order for the project to be completed. And it'll take approximately 10 to 20 hours to complete. Just a little bit about me. My name is Ted Petru. I founded a company called Dunder Data. We specialize in training those who are interested in the fundamentals of data science and machine learning. I have written a few books. Panda's Cookbook is a book that uh, covers recipes on how to use, use the Pandas library effectively on real-world data sets. I have written an introductory Python book for those who have no experience programming. It is called Exercise Python and it has about 100 free exercises. It is available for free on my website. I have an upcoming book called Master Data Analysis, Master Data Analysis with Pandas. This will be even more thorough coverage of the Pandas library and how to um, do data analysis with it uh, idiomatically. I've also authored two Python libraries called Dexplow and Dexplot. Dexplow is very similar to Pandas and it does data exploration. It is uh, what was the genesis of this particular project, actually. So Dexplow has a little bit more functionality than Pandas Cub, but it is uh, built uh, somewhat similarly. And Dexplot is a library that does plotting, um, and it's very similar to the Seaborn plotting library uh, in Python. All right, yes, and I do offer uh, data science and machine learning classes, and you can find them at dunderdata.com along with all my books. All right, so the prerequisites um, in terms of what knowledge you need to have before taking, this, taking on this project, you certainly need to know all the basic types in Python, and uh, the common data structures, tuples, lists, sets, and dictionaries will be using all of those very frequently. So you'll have to be very familiar with those data structures in order to uh, be able to complete the project. Um, control flow, obviously uh, if-else statements, very important. Um, a little bit more advanced are for loops, when, uh, especially when iterating through lists or dictionaries. We'll be doing that quite, quite often. Something that is not um, terribly common for, for beginning beginners is raising and handling exceptions. Now this is not a maybe a strict prerequisite. You can uh, learn these along the way, but it will help if you have had exposure to them before. Um, you will need to know the basics of classes and object-oriented programming, so I'm not going to cover the very basics of, of classes, and, um, but it's something that you definitely need to be uh, familiar with and know how to at least um, define a, a basic class. There's some very good videos by a guy named Corey Schaefer that I've linked in the description. I would recommend watching a few of those before uh, embarking on this project if you have not done any work with classes before. 
So we are going to heavily rely on the NumPy library. So exposure to NumPy is going to be quite important. If you have not had exposure to NumPy, um, you will probably still be able to um, get by. There, I have linked in the description a quick start to NumPy. Um, exposure to pandas is also helpful. We will not be using pandas to build our library, but uh, we will be making our library so that it is similar to pandas. So if you have uh, if you have experience with pandas, then it will help you understand uh, what the what our what our library is attempting to do. All right. So here are the major objectives for uh, for this entire project. So yes, the end result, as I've already mentioned, is to build a library similar to pandas. So we're going to have one main class, and that's the data frame class. It's the same main class that, that pandas has. The data will be stored in NumPy arrays. We will, uh, our, we will be able to read in data from a comma-separated value file. So it's very important that we can uh, at least read in data and not have to manually type it out. So we'll have a simple way of getting data in from text files. We'll, be, we'll have a nicely formatted display of the data frame in the notebook. So if you're familiar with pandas, you'll, you'll know that it, it shows its, um, its data frames as nice HTML tables in Jupyter notebooks. Our data frame will be able to select subsets of data with just the brackets. That's a universal way of selecting subsets of data with Python is the brackets operator. Our data frame will be able to do that. We will also define many special methods, and these are covered in the Python data model. So more details on that when we get there. Our data frame will implement all the basic aggregation methods, such as sum, min, max, mean, and median. Aggregation methods are those that return a single value. They summarize a sequence of values with a single number. And then we'll have uh, you know, several non-aggregating methods, the ones that don't return a single value. So for instance, is and a just returns whether uh, a value is true or false, or whether a value is uh, missing or not. It returns a Boolean true or false. You know, unique will be able to return all the unique values of a column and, and so forth. So there are many other non-aggregating methods that we will implement. A very common thing to do in a data analysis is to group by one uh, column or more than one column. Our data frame class will be able to group by one or two columns, and we will be able to aggregate uh, another variable. So it's a very important um, fundamental you know, functionality that we will uh, include in our data frame. And lastly, uh, we will have methods specific to string columns. So string columns are handled uh, you know, certainly differently than numeric columns. Uh, many of the aggregation methods don't really make much sense with string columns, such as sum. you typically don't sum a string column. You can't really take the mean or median. So we'll have a specific functionality just for those string columns, like making it uppercase or lowercase. It will coincide with the string functionality available in regular Python strings. Okay, a little bit uh, that you'll learn about software development. So we will be creating a specific environment just for this project, which will help isolate um, you know, our work so that we can ensure its quality. And a very large part of the project is going to be based on something called test-driven development, and I'll talk about that more later. But this will ensure quality again by making sure that our data frame is able to pass all these tests. And we're going to be using the excellent PyTest library that uh, helps out with unit testing. All right, so that concludes this first introductory video. I will go through some examples in the very next video inside a Jupyter Notebook. All right, uh, looking forward to it. Follow me there.